Carlos, vous pourriez regarder cette navette là On pense que peut-être qu'on on va la changer. Regardez. We are at Chopards in Geneva in the creative workshop. Here, the most important material is gold. C'est du bon or, 18 carats. C'est un travail qui exige une grande minutie, beaucoup de concentration. Chopard is one of the most prestigious jewelers in the world. Artisans work on exceptional pieces in yellow, pink, and white gold. Alors là, Frédéric est en train de travailler sur une des cinq pièces qui sont annoncées cette année. C'est pour Kate Blanchette, c'était pour euh, la Golden Globe. The raw material is stocked in the basement of the workshop. Gold bars worth 30,000 euros per kilo. Theo is in charge of the gold foundry, and for security reasons, he wishes to remain anonymous. Là, je vais livrer 12 kilos d'or fin à notre atelier fonderie pour faire une mise en alliage d'or. He has nearly 400,000 euros worth of gold on his little trolley. These gold bars are made in Switzerland. However, the country doesn't have any active mines. So, where does this precious metal come from? Apparently, it's a mystery. On n'a pas de, de possibilité de connaître l'origine de cet or euh, en dehors de la société qui a donc euh, fondu cet or, puisqu'il provient de différentes origines de récupération d'or très ancien et récent, de provenance d'or de provenance minière. Euh, C'est pas possible aujourd'hui de tracer cet or là. A symbol of luxury, glamour and wealth, gold is the stuff dreams are made of. It sparkles on the most beautiful women in the world, as well as in the bank vaults. But gold also has a dark side. It has financed civil wars and led to ecological disasters and human rights abuses. In Africa and Latin America, gold can be a curse. So who is buying this dirty gold? Switzerland produces 70% of all the gold bars that are made in the world. From Peru to Dubai, we have been on the trail of dirty gold. You want the gold set? Yeah. Unmasked brokers. There's no transparency. No. Welcome to a world of trafficking and full of lies. The world of dirty gold. What does gold mining look like? To get an idea, we're going to Peru, specifically the Madre de Dios region in the east of the country. In the heart of the Amazonian forest, there has been a gold rush going on for the last 40 years. 40,000 miners have come to try and find their fortune. Here, gold is everywhere, in the form of particles, in rivers and in the soil. It is clumsily mined, most of the time illegally, by thousands of gold washers. Umberto meets with us in the middle of the jungle. He has been operating a small family mine for 14 years now. He has five employees working for him. The gold diggers pump the earth at the bottom of this artificial pond to extract the maximum possible amount of ore. With just some pipes and a motor, their methods are very rudimentary. A traditional method that uses mercury, a highly toxic metal, to separate the gold from the silt. According to international regulations, mercury should only be used under special conditions in secure factories.
No, está... Mayormente nosotros pisamos con botas. ¿Cómo tiene botas? Sí, es que está apurado por estar pisando así descalzo. Umberto's men find between 4 and 60 grams of gold per day using this method. The mercury that is used for extracting the gold should be collected in protective drums and then specially treated. But here it is just poured into the river and the highly toxic vapor it produces is dispersed into the atmosphere. It is estimated that each year more than 50 tons of mercury are released here. There are thousands of small mines like Umberto's in the region. And the consequences of this are stark to see. An area the size of Bangkok, that is 1,500 square kilometers of forest, have been destroyed and the soil contaminated. The state has been trying to halt the environmental devastation from gold mining for the past two years. Authorities have forbidden any mining along the country's rivers which has almost led to a civil war breaking out between the army and the miners. Jesus Menacho is the captain of the country's navy. The Peruvian authorities want to demonstrate to us that they are keeping house. Ustedes están realizando dragados en río, lo que está prohibido por ley. Se va a proceder a su intervención, ¿ya? El, el fiscal ha dispuesto su detención y la prisión es de 4 a 8 años. Their methods are radical. Each barge is blown up with dynamite. Gold fever has turned Madre de Dios into the Wild West with its very own sheriffs and outlaws. Despite the risks, miners continue to flock here. And towns to cater for them have sprung up from nowhere. They don't have official names. This one is just called Kilometer 108 by its inhabitants. Just like in the Western films, there are mainly hostels and bodegas. The trafficking of women has also become a successful business here. Adolescents who have come to work as waitresses end up as prostitutes. We film with a hidden camera. In this bar, the girls trying to entice us are very young. Some of them aren't even 15 years old. <laughs> Her invitation is clear. There is no doubt as to its meaning. 50 kilometers away, a man has agreed to meet us. In this building, Oscar Guadalupe houses underage girls who have been rescued from these seedy bars. He estimates that in this region, more than 200 adolescent girls are being forced into prostitution. Like Juela, 14 years old, who comes from Ecuador or Rosa, who is 17 years old. This is my habitation. The lady told me that it was not a bar. She told me that it was a chicha, that they only sold chicha. Do you force her to do things that you don't want? Yes. It's a story frequent, very common. They tell the girls to work in an activity, but at the end they force them to do something else. And generally, the minera is an activity of men. 
Y los varones andan demandando licor y sexo como distracción, como diversión. Y sin darse cuenta, ponen en una situación irregular, en una situación de cosa, de mercancía a las personas. The dark side of gold is the destruction of the environment, human exploitation and the settling of scores. In this world of violence, there are clans that fight each other for the control of mining territory. Como no existe ninguna seguridad, siempre guardan su dinero en ellos, ¿no? Y cuando alguien tiene un poco más de dinero, este es muy sencillo eh, cometer alguna algún acto ilícito y robarle, ¿no? Hacerle daño Roma, también. Toman y se matan. There is one woman who, with her clan, controls the region's largest territory. Her nickname is Goya. Here, everyone calls her the Gold Queen. This evil baroness regularly makes the front page of the newspapers, a kind of mafiosa in command of a colossal mining empire. Minería cuyo patrimonio ascendería a 30 millones de dólares mensuales por extracción. Today, her clan is being prosecuted by the Peru courts for illegal mining, money laundering, tax fraud, and arms trafficking. Goya never speaks in public. It is her daughter, Maruja Baca, who takes center stage to deny all of the accusations. We want to find out who Goya is selling her dirty gold to. In Lima, at the headquarters of El Comercio, the large daily national newspaper, a journalist has investigated the gold queen. He has made some astonishing discoveries about the destination of her gold. Entonces, eh, pusimos la, vista, la pista sobre quiénes, quiénes recibían finalmente el, el oro de estas personas, ¿no? Llegó, llegamos a determinar que casi todo el mercado del oro se, se iba procedente de Madrid, llegaba a Ginebra y a, y a Zurich. Creo que desde los últimos cuatro años se ha exportado media tonelada de oro a Suiza. A simple vista, tú no podrías pensar que ella pues, exporta tantas cantidades de oro a, a Suiza, ¿no? Half a ton equals 15 million euros. So how is this mafiosa able to sell all this gold in Switzerland, and who does she sell it to? Victor, a former policeman, knows where the Gold Queen lives, and we're going to attempt to meet her. She lives on the edge of Madre de Dios. Neither policemen nor journalists are welcome here, and Victor is nervous. No, no, yo periodista. Somos turistas. Okay. Y puta, te chancan la cámara, te golpean, te quitan eso y lo botan arriba. Son turistas que vienen a firmar, ah, pero queremos firmar caimanes, esas cosas, no, nada más. We cross the river to get to her village. On the riverbank, taxi drivers are waiting to pick up the rare visitors. We discover Goya, the gold queen's mining empire. Everywhere here, the ground is being ripped open by diggers and bulldozers. In town, we film with a hidden camera. Arriving in front of Goya's house, we find armed guards ensuring that it remains secure. We say that we have an appointment with the Gold Queen, and they allow us to enter. In the courtyard are dump trucks and diggers. Upstairs, they make us wait on the balcony. There is an unrestricted view over kilometers of mines, all owned by Goya. But the Gold Queen is not there. 
tu casa? Sí, pero en el restaurante nos está esperando, pero yo no conozco el restaurante. ¿Y ¿Cuál restaurante? Hay un lugar, claro. Ahí tú nos va a decir eso. We meet Goya wearing a hat here in one of the town's restaurants. Her daughter Maruja is at her side. We say that we are journalists and they refuse to be interviewed. Al tener este tipo de entrevistas así anteriormente utilizado por otros medios, por el momento todavía no estaríamos. A ver, y me viste que trabaja, a ver, está tranquilo. We want to find out where the gold they produce ends up. Well, the colors that they say that the gold of the Mother of God is sold in Switzerland. Is it sold in Switzerland? No. No, it's not. It's not sold in Switzerland. It's sold in Switzerland. And who sells it here? Yes. Ian Dem is a gold exporter, an intermediary between the miners and the world's buyers. Ian Dem has trading posts all over the region. Trading posts like this one, where it's forbidden to film. The El Comercio journalist has discovered that the company E&M, which sells Goya's gold, was established by the Gold Queen's own accountant. Él a la vez es contador de una gran productora de oro de Madre de Dios, considerada ilegal actualmente, investigada por lavado de activos, y a la vez es el dueño de la empresa E&M Company, que es una de las grandes empresas que envían cargamentos de oro a Suiza. La señora envía su producción a Suiza a través de su contador. Now we want to know which Swiss company buys E&M's gold. A company specializing in economic intelligence stores sensitive data about gold exports on the top floor of this building. The data concerning E&M is confidential and comes from the customs office. Claro, aparecen todos los datos de los documentos, o sea, el importador nacional, el exportador extranjero, el consignatario y todos los datos de valores, eh, todos los datos. We ask her to print the statement showing all of E&M's gold exports. Esa línea aparece el año y el mes del embarque. Luego aparece eh, la compañía que exporta, que es E&M Company, el país de destino y es Suiza, nombre de la empresa que compra que es Metalor Technology. Metalor, a Swiss company which is the number one gold bar manufacturer in the world. Its role is to purify the gold and then melt it. Basé en Suisse, depuis plus de 150 ans, notre histoire est commune à celle des métaux précieux. This document proves that in 2013, up until November, 100% of the gold exported by E&M was sent to metal ore. So it is clear that there is a link between Switzerland's number one gold manufacturer and Goya's mafia family. The same gold that has devastated the entire region, a reality that is very far removed from the image presented by metal ore's promotional video. Nos produits nous sont fournis par la nature. En échange, nous lui garantissons notre loyauté. Prendre soin de l'écologie, c'est une des missions de Metalor. We decide to ask Metalor for an explanation and as it happens, the Swiss company is participating in a conference held here in Lima. We manage to get ourselves an invite. All the gold manufacturers have come here to defend their latest position, clean production. Janet McCarthy, the company's group general counsel, speaks on behalf of Metalor. We are dedicated to being an important actor in responsible and ethical supply chains responding to consumer demands. In essence, you can see there is a lot of regulation to make sure that every gram that we source 
goes through a very stringent protocol. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Every gram will be monitored. During the coffee break, we asked the Metalor official for further details. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Vous parlez français? Uh, English. English. Ah, okay. <laughs> Where does come the rest of the gold Im uh, imported from uh, Peru? From. Sorry, this. Do you, do you import, for example, gold from uh, Madre de Dios? No, we do not. We we trace every single gram that that is, is provided to us. So we no longer okay. source from, from the region. But for example, when you see this document with which came from other duties. For example, this company who buy exclusively is gold from Madre de Dios. It was involved in buying the gold of a Baca family. It's illegal. The, I, I know the company. We, the company has made a decision to, to no longer source from, from this region. Uh, but I can say that the, the sourcing for, for, for any company that is, is subject to due diligence through our company goes through extensive due diligence. And, uh, so how do you do it? You go and see this yes. this company, and you say, "Don't buy any more the gold from this." Uh, from this. A man interrupts the conversation. Do you want to comment on on ENM? Later, later, maybe. Now she's going to make a presentation. We see that you're still buying gold. No, we we're, no, we're not. The company, as I said, the company made a decision that we don't source from the region. Could you excuse us for a moment? Yeah. Sorry, can you excuse us for a moment? Yes, of course. Extraction operation complete. That is the last we will see of Metalor's managers. Back to Switzerland. Metalor is not alone in refining dirty gold, and there is an even more serious issue. The sector's other heavyweight, Argor, is accused of having violated a UN embargo by buying gold from a country in the grip of a civil war. The only available images of its factory are from this corporate film. Argor employs 250 members of staff here. The gold that they melt here comes from all over the world, and each year they process 400 tonnes of gold, with a value of 12 billion euros. American, Kathy Austin, wants to prove that Argor has knowingly melted gold from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a country that's bloody civil war has tragically killed six million people since erupting in 1994. It's been dangerous on the ground in the Congo when I visited the mines. I've had to be concerned for my security because I'm snooping into the business of what these gold exporters are up to. Because you are talking about individuals and companies which are profiting in the millions of dollars. And my investigation is a threat to their business. In 2004, Kathy went to the Democratic Republic of the Congo for the first time. In this amateur footage, we see her investigating on behalf of the United Nations. At the time, the UN wanted to know how the rebels were financing their weapons purchases when the country was under embargo. To find out, Kathy focused on the gold mines held by armed groups in the Kivu region. She went there several times and was accompanied by a TV crew on one occasion. Here, the militia hold workers in a state of near slavery. In these mines' depths are tens of thousands of miners, often children, working without any safety measures for just one dollar a day. What do you do here? I work here. I always here. Oh, oh, les matières, ça passe toujours là. C'est quoi ça? Or, de l'or, What I witnessed was the way rebel groups took over mining areas and forced the local population to mine. They were recruiting child soldiers. Uh, there was a lot of rape that was going on in this area. And there were a lot of massacres. It's one of the reasons why I really wanted to look at just who was behind these rebel groups. 
Kathy wanted to follow the gold trail. She learned how the Congo rebels were able to bypass the UN embargo imposed on their country. Gold from Congo is secretly transported to Uganda on clandestine flights. Once there, it becomes Ugandan gold, a perfect laundering operation. The gold can now be sold officially on the world market. According to the UN, Argor melted three tons of this gold between 2004 and 2005. It is suspected of having violated the UN embargo and therefore indirectly financing the civil war. In Uganda, Kathy Austin continues her investigation. In nine years, she has collected hundreds of documents. According to her, there is overwhelming proof against Argor. What we see in the case of Argor Herreras is that they were actually taking gold that they were knew was from the DRC and illegally laundering that into the global financial system. Now Kathy wants Argor to be brought to justice. She is assisted by the NGO trial, which is specialized in the legal fight against impunity. These lawyers have analyzed all of the documents that she has collected, like this export license, which clearly shows that the gold comes from Congo. A license that was given to an Argor intermediary. Uganda Commercial Impex. And then this second document, an air waybill from the Emirates Airline Company. It shows that this intermediary, Uganda Commercial Impex, sent gold to Argor in Switzerland. This link, which allows us to finally reconstruct the chain between the Swiss and the Republic of Democratic Congo, and so that we can reproach to a company to have blanched des éléments provenant d'un crime, en l'occurrence ce crime de guerre, il faut démontrer qu'elle avait connaissance ou qu'elle aurait dû présumer de l'origine criminelle de cet or. The NGO trial has decided to make the wider public more aware of this matter. On the 4th of November 2013, they call a press conference. Trials director, Philip Grant, announces that he has just brought evidence to the court in order to open a criminal investigation. L'idée cet après-midi, c'est de vous présenter la, la dénonciation pénale qui a été euh, introduite tout récemment contre l'entreprise Argor, l'une des plus grandes entreprises de affinage d'or. And so that people can understand this trafficking, the NGO has prepared a short but rather dark animation on gold merchants. Je m'appelle Tony. Les mauvaises langues disent que je suis un pilleur, mais moi je préfère dire que je suis dans l'import-export. Mon terrain de jeu en ce moment, hmm, c'est l'Afrique. Dire qu'il y en a qui pensent que c'est le tiers-monde. La première étape, choisir le bon pays. Le mieux, un endroit en pleine guerre civile avec des factions rivales qui s'affrontent pour... Euh, on sait pas trop pourquoi. Là, il y a moyen pour moi de faire du business et pour elle d'acheter plus d'armes. C'est tout bénéfique. Bon. C'est bien beau l'or brut, mais ça se vend pas comme ça, les gros cailloux, surtout quand ils sont pas blanc blanc. Facile, on envoie l'or aux entreprises de raffinage. Certaines vont transformer mon magot en joli lingot, tout beau, tout propre. Je te vois venir. Tu vas les accuser elles aussi d'être complices de pillage. When the conference ends, Kathy and the team of lawyers will be rocked by an unexpected telephone call. OK. Ah, c'est bien ça. Merci. Panique totale chez Argor. Réunion de crise, panique totale chez Argor. Enquête pénale ouverte. The Swiss courts open a criminal investigation against Argor for complicity in war crimes and laundering. Today? Something which has never happened before. It, I'm just amazed. It's just an amazing moment. Cathy's nine-year investigation has paid off. Like, obviously, I'm speechless. <laughs> For the first time, a Swiss gold refiner is in danger of having to justify itself in front of a tribunal. The signal that it gives to the companies that participate in this chain, which goes from pillage to the blanchiment, is extremely strong today. It's a great victory for justice. That was good. Thank you for saying that, because I can't say anything right now. The courts will decide if Argor were aware of the criminal origin of the gold.
we have found a former executive from the company. He worked at Argor at the same time as these events. It's the first time that a manager from the gold refinery world agrees to talk to journalists. He refused to be filmed, but we were able to record our conversation. We show him the airway bill, which established the link between Argor and the Ugandan intermediary. Quand à Argor on voit ce document, on se pose pas une question Non, penso che quello Argor dovrebbe averlo visto. Penso che quello Argor dovrebbe averlo visto. Dopo ci può stare che magari dentro e chi, certo non chi era di produzione, ovviamente qualcuno finanziario. Che poi magari c'è stata troppa superficialità di non capire. La competenza? Può darsi. Dico una cosa non si mette lì. Nel settore a certi livelli. No? E, e come maneggiare patate. Non ho capito. Dopo è nei anni che lei fa un lavoro. E vede i chili, i quintali di chili che vanno, che vedono. E come maneggiare patate, ho capito? We try to speak to Argor, but the company claims that they were never aware of the real origin of the gold and refuses to be interviewed at all. Il y a un certain nombre de personnes qu'on a interviewé qui portent des accusations quand même très graves à l'égard de l'entreprise. Il y a une ouverture d'enquête de la part du ministère public et c'est quand même très embêtant qu'il y ait pas de réponse de l'entreprise et des explications. Argor will not say anything else. We meet with the activist Christoph Wiedmer. He has been denouncing the bad practices of the Swiss gold refiners for many years. In April 2013, they took advantage of the World Watch and Jewelry Show, the Basel World in Bale, to attract attention to the cause. His NGO deployed this giant sign, Basel World, Stop Dirty Gold. I believe that they know much more than what they say, because they have their people on place and they know exactly what happens on the, on, on the place. They only stop buying once it is already a scandal. And we want them to become much more engaged and really not to buy true dirty gold. There is a total lack of transparency on the gold circuit. The precious metal arrives in Geneva or Zurich by plane and then is transported without passing through customs to free ports. These highly secure, vast warehouses keep their doors closed to everyone. An extraterritorial zone where armored vans come to collect the gold and transport it directly to the refineries. The production of the gold bars also lends itself to a lack of transparency as this raw material comes from all four corners of the globe. A ring from Latin America, a gold tooth sold by a Russian dentist, a trafficked stolen bracelet, or nuggets from illegal mines. Everything ends up in the same furnace. And once melted, it is impossible to tell the clean gold and the dirty gold apart. Stamped, made in Switzerland, it acquires a new virginity, a perfect laundering system. In Zurich, Egon von Greyers is an asset manager. His speciality, gold bar investment. Hi, Johnny. Um, just uh, on my way. I have gold bars uh, of about 100,000 euros. In his case, the famous gold bars. These Swiss gold bars are so highly esteemed because they are the purest in the world. Here are two one kilo bars. Um, they are worth around 30,000 euros. This is four nines, and these are 99.99% 99 
uh, gold, which is the highest purity. Switzerland is the biggest producer in the world of these type of gold bars. Switzerland refines up to 70% of all gold in the world. People who invest in gold, they want to have Swiss bars. In times of recession, gold is a safe investment. Over 15 years, its price has risen sixfold, a windfall for Egan's customers. Even when the gold price went down last year, the buying was bigger than ever. Do your customers are concerned about the question of traceability? Who no. No, they don't care. Never. They, the customers never... That we have not had a single customer who ever asked where the gold came. In Switzerland, no one asks questions about the gold's origin, and those who dare to do so take a big risk. Jean Ziegler, member of the UN Council of Human Rights, explains why to us. The secret bancaire and the ethic cover also the... Euh, trafictor. Quiconque viole le secret bancaire, donnerait une information à un journaliste ou à un, un juge étranger, etc., sur le mouvement de l'or, sur le sol suisse, eh bien, il est poursuivi d'office par le parquet. La fonderie n'a même pas besoin de porter plainte, de se constituer, etc., société civile ou autre, ou plaignante, d'office. Switzerland, gold and banks. It's an old story and one that has often been rife with scandals. Everything started at the beginning of the 20th century, when the big Swiss banks created gold refineries to produce their own gold bars. The objective was to attract the world's wealthy, who were looking to invest money in Switzerland. According to the University of Lausanne's historian, Sebastian Gehr, this system was devised from the outset with a view to seducing those who held dirty gold. The Swiss banks have made the choice to se position in the gold market of gold. And from this point of view, they have occupied a turning point in the domain of gold gold and it is extraordinarily extreme. It is a choice deliberate des milieux bancaires suisses, suivis des milieux gouvernementaux suisses, de se positionner dans ce créneau. During the Second World War, the Swiss banks melted gold looted by the Nazis in Europe, notably from the Jewish Holocaust victims. Jewels, belongings, even going so far as melting teeth from corpses. In the 1980s, the Swiss banking state set about bypassing the embargo on gold from the apartheid regime in South Africa. Il va y avoir des arrangements euh, négociés entre l'État, plus précisément l'administration fédérale des douanes et les banques, pour dissimuler les achats d'or opérés en Afrique du Sud dans les statistiques suisses. The current controversy surrounding Argor and Metalor are just the latest episodes in the scandalous story of gold in Switzerland. For six months, we have been requesting interviews with the government and its administration on this topic without success. To try and meet with them, we will take advantage of the opening of the World Watch and Jewelry Fair at Bale, the country's third largest industry. 18 billion euros in exports. The former president of the Confederation and the current defense minister, Yuli Morer, will open the event. We shout our questions to him. Monsieur Morer, je suis de la télévision française Canal Plus. Je peux vous poser une question? Ah, après, merci. On a fait une enquête où on remonte les filières d'or, et notamment les filières d'or illégales, et on a découvert que beaucoup de cet or venait en Suisse. C'est l'industrie qui est responsable ou, ou l'État qui protège l'industrie Je pense que c'est une collaboration entre les deux. Donc l'État protège ouais, Protège ouais. l'industrie Oui, ouais, ça c'est nécessaire. Et c'est pas gênant que l'or du sang arrive en Suisse L'or du crime, l'or de la guerre On peut faire tout ce qui est possible, mais je pense pas qu'il est possible pour... Euh... On a vraiment le sentiment que l'État protège l'industrie qui va chercher de l'or illégal aux quatre coins de la planète. C'est particulier. Non, 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 on ne peut pas dire ça, absolument pas. 
On l'a constaté, nous, on a été au Pérou, on a raconté l'histoire Argor aujourd'hui à un procès. Alors, il y a une enquête. Sur votre impression, mais c'est pas la réalité. Argor, il y a bien une enquête pénale contre Argor. Ouais, bon, non, non. Faced with difficult questions, his entourage put an end to the interview. We asked these questions again at the Harry Winston stand, the luxury brand of the Swatch Group, run by Nyla Hayek. Oui, Harry Winston a seulement des montres en or. Sont tout en or. De leur propre? Oui. Oui, certainement. On a seulement de l'or pour vous trouver de l'or de l'or sale. De non, il veut, il veut pas de l'or sale. De l'or du conflit, de l'or du sang. Vous pouvez le non, garantir pas. Non, écoutez, vous pouvez jamais garantir 100% que l'or, on l'achète aussi à la banque. Alors, vous demandez les banques s'ils peuvent garantir. On a remonté les filières qui arrivent jusqu'à Metalor, Argor, qui sont, je pense, vos fournisseurs. Ouais. Vous me laissez un peu présenter, hein, Monsieur Moore. Merci. The senior official in Switzerland who is tasked with improving the transparency of the gold industry is this man, Hans-Peter Egler. We speak to him. There's no transparency. Mm, actually, I mean, you have, uh, it depends what transparency is. Transparency you're... Uh, For example, you can ask the refiners to say who they buy from the gold. Then you can check. Someone can check. The NGO can't check. The journalists can't check. The government... No, the government doesn't. Can't check. So nobody checking. So we have to trust the companies. And then you have dirty but gold actually, who is coming uh, into the country. I to remind you that it was uh, explicitly said that you shouldn't uh, yeah. film here. Their annoyance is important because the Swiss state has been under pressure for the past four years to put its industry in order. Well, good morning, everyone. In 2010, Obama passed a law that demanded greater traceability for all gold that comes out of a war zone measures that are also imposed on all OECD countries two years later. From 2014, Switzerland has committed to publishing the gold importation data for each country. It is a small first step. Since legislation has been strengthened, another country has taken up the reins of the business of dirty gold, Dubai. We leave for this small emirate of the Arab Peninsula. A few years ago, the city became the second most important place in the world for the gold market. Here, the yellow metal is everywhere, on the bodywork of cars and even in souvenir shops. Mini bars of pure gold that cost more than 400 euros. Dubai's nickname definitely suits it very well the city of gold. It's gold 18 carats. Bon, bah, cette pièce là elle coûte euh, 250 000 euros. Et il y a de la clientèle pour acheter ça En Europe, non, <laughs> ici oui. <laughs> Since worldwide gold regulations became more strict 2 years ago, Dubai's turnover in the gold business has increased sixfold. Here, traders fall over themselves to sell off their gold mainly through the gold souk, the jewellery market. Here, every single workshop is happy to buy gold, whatever its origin. If I come with one kilo, can you buy it? Yeah, it is not a problem. <laughs> Ten kilos? Yes, yes. If so I'm buying gold from a different this country, is, and I would need the Dubai customs people. So if they have cleared it, means it's fine. Here you are legal. Yeah. But do you know if yeah, the other yeah, one yeah. are or not? Almost everybody asks for the documents. OK. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nearly everybody, an almost confession. With a hidden camera, we return to the gold souk market and pretend that we are gold sellers. Do you know where we can sell gold? You want a gold sell? Yeah. We make out that we want to sell a kilo of Ugandan gold and half a kilo of gold from the Congo. Gold that is under an embargo that, in principle, no one should buy. However, it only takes a few minutes for us to find a taker. I have one kilo official, and I have like half a kilo less official. Do you buy it or you don't? There's a problem to buy. And you have kilo of papers? One kilo you have papers, right? One kilo papers from Uganda, okay. half a kilo I have paper, mm -hmm. but from Congo. Okay, I'll talk to one of my friends. 
if he's, uh, if they say yes, then we can do it. Okay. If he say yes, I'll, I'll talk to him. Okay. okay. How do you pay? We we'll pay in cash. Oh, in cash. Thank you very much. The seller calls us back a few hours later. He agrees to buy all our gold. A trader who regularly works in Dubai anonymously confirms to us that this happens all the time. Il se dirige vers le bon sou, il y a des plastiques et il vend des, euh, des sacs de plastique qui contiennent euh, des kilos, des kilos de, de pépites d'or. Ces gens-là, ils vont vendre l'or qu'ils amènent à Dubaï en dessous du prix du marché. Donc ils trouvent problème. Il va dire non. But to get to the gold souk, first you have to pass through customs. In Dubai, they don't pay much attention, as maintains this former UN expert, with documents to support his assertions. This is for the export of 500 kilograms of uh, gold from the DRC. There's no original, this doesn't exist. This is purely invented. This is just a logo plucked from the internet. Once they arrive in Dubai with this airway bill, yeah, they, uh, they're able to clear customs. Uh, there's no check on the certificates of origin. So the gold enters in Dubai, yeah? The trace is lost thereafter. Once it has arrived on their territory, Dubai's refineries will retrieve this gold that is supposed to be under embargo. One of them, Emirates Gold, who the UN has pointed the finger at, opens its doors to us. This refinery was created by a former manager of a big Swiss refinery. Today, it is his son, the managing director, who meets us. Is this 10? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70 kilos. So, 78, 2,8 million dollars. We ask him about the UN report that came out in 2009. Congo. Uh, no. You've been in a report of, of UN, I think, in That was uh, much before that, I think. 2007, maybe 2008. Congo uh, bought in 2007, 2008. I don't think it was Congo either, so maybe you should check your facts. You bought from Uganda, but it been by the monitoring, Congo? the monitoring group for Congo wrote that you bought from Uganda, that bought from Congo, and that you knew why. It's always, Absolutely. it's always tricky. I think the, the supply chain for gold uh, has become clearer and clearer, I think, over the years. Emirates Gold says that it is now one of the good guys in Dubai. But what about all the others? To talk about this, we are met by Ahmed bin Sulayem. He is in charge of overseeing gold trade in the Emirates. OK, looks like a busy desk. In his office on the 50th floor, he sweeps aside all the criticisms leveled at his country. Where's the evidence? Where's the issue? And then you see a different story. It's over 20% of gold trade comes through Dubai. Today, we are the ones who are laughing, not the critics. And uh, we're not only moving forward from $12 billion of gold trade to 2011, it reached uh, 55 billion, and the official numbers are 70 billion. There are different challenges in Europe with the, uh, with the economic situation and the new rules that are coming out, and uh, Dubai is a haven for business-friendly environment. A haven. In the world of gold, these refineries are where all the incriminating traces disappear. And on this very day in Dubai, Ahmed bin Sulayem is unveiling the building site of what will become the world's largest refinery. Ahmed, you're 24 carats, huh? 24 carats? Yes, 24 carats. Because you said 24 carats, it means you're not 24. No, no, no. Okay, okay. The ground is broken for a factory of 15,000 square meters that is expected to produce 1,400 tons of gold bars per year. The demand and the business in Dubai has grown so far that justifies building the largest gold refinery in the world. What does it mean? The gold business is now in Dubai worldwide? Time will tell. We're on the top three anyways. Today, gold bars made in Dubai flood the market. 20% even leave directly for Switzerland and bring with them the risk that dirty gold will enter the country once again. 
In this business, nothing is lost. Everything is transformed. Is dirty gold inevitable? We return to Chopard in Geneva. The jeweler has found a solution. He has partnered the company with an ethical organization called Fair Mind. This gold is produced by artisanal miners, according to strict regulations. The result? Less pollution, less poverty, and less damage to society. Là, on retrouve, donc, de l'or fin sous forme de granules qui a été extrait dans les mines artisanales. Depuis la mine jusque sur le marché, on va s'assurer que la traçabilité de cet or soit effectuée. Aujourd'hui, euh, les quantités disponibles sont assez faibles. Pour Chopard, euh, on s'est engagé à produire à moyen terme ou court terme environ 5 à 10 % de nos composants en or provenant de l'origine Fairmind. Donc nous essayons de contribuer à cette évolution pour que plusieurs mines puissent se certifier et produire toujours davantage. Chopard launched its ethical collection at the Cannes Festival in 2013. Its ambassador, Marion Cotillard. Up until now, only a few pieces of outrageously expensive jewelry have been produced. It is a drop in the ocean. But the initiative has since been followed by other brands, such as Cartier. The luxury industry has understood that very soon the dirty gold scandal could cost them dearly.